This is the Red Arrow Show with me, Josh Everton, Anderson Cox, Alan Smith and Craig Wood. The usual four back together and we're here to react to last night's entertaining second half. They have a 2-2 draw against Wickham Wanderers and then we're going to preview Saturday's game away at Huddersfield which Andy's already got it in there of pink all over. Um, it is the game that fans have taken it upon themselves to use it as wear your pink shirts and donate to breast cancer. There is a, um, there's not a link, sorry. If you would like to enter the raffle for the signed pink shirt, which we've got, let us know in the comments below and we can send you the details. So let's get stuck into it. Right, Andy, starting with last night, a very drab first half um followed by four goals in the second half um not at one point were we in the lead of the game um but for the moments in which we did concede up until scoring again we looked like a different side compared to the rest of the night yeah we seem to be the formations kept seem to be changing there were, there were one bit i didn't even know i couldn't work out what for, what formation we were actually playing we split seemed to play three at the back and nobody out wide on the left hand side or I have no idea what we were doing. Um, no, Adam Phillips, I'm assuming he's injured, but he went in the squad at all. Toe injury. Toe injury. I can tell you that. He's done <coughs> let me know he'd been having injections in his toe and he'd and gone it, for a scan yesterday. Good. And it, need, it needs to be sorted out rather than just keep trying to make do and mend. It needs to just mend, doesn't it? Um, I think I don't think it would I don't think it was scintillating stuff at all in the first half, but I couldn't. I couldn't see them scoring either. To be honest, I didn't think. Apart from their left winger, um, I don't think they were up to much at all. Really, um, it took my brother ages to realise that Josh Scowen were playing for him because no, normally he's uh, dictating stuff, and he weren't. They weren't. The, they weren't the usual housery selves. But you know, they had. They had the moments. Um, I think our goalkeeper were wasting more time when we were losing than Otto. I think we just gave him a... Oh, dear me. I don't know. That goal. Oh, dear me. It just trickled in. It for, oh, it would just, so that weren't right great. Um, and to be honest, later on in the, the, sec, the second goal, well, well I, I could keep going on about Charlie Caroli and, and Keystone Cops and all that, but my goodness, it was like Pinball Wizard, it going in and coming and going in and coming... We could, right, I know I'm old, but I just think if your ball comes near you, put your boot through it. Anywhere will do. When it's in your box, that close in yours, just put your boot through it. I don't know what the heck we were doing, but what we weren't doing, we're clearing the damn thing. We were just letting them, we stood and watched. Whereas at the other side, when we were trying to shoot, they were, block, they were blocking everything they can. It's not that we didn't block anything, but it, it were a passage of play that looked ridiculous. In between time, um, it was good to see Humphreys come on, and I thought he's going to he's going to look pretty good up up there. We we caused Grosvenor scored a, a, a nice little dink goal, a bit Hamel, uh, Adam Hamill esque, getting it out of left, cutting in and sliding it, curling it round the uh, the far post. That were lovely, and then of course Keystone Cops took over. God knows what we were doing. Um, and to be honest, I thought we were more than fortunate. To um, you know, to get an equaliser, uh, but we did. Can't keep relying on it. Can't keep giving away eight goals and then relying on on uh, on uh, on equalisers like we did. So you know, a bit disappointing, really. Man, I like it though. It's fitting into your t-shirt there. They think it's all over. It is now with that last. Well, how was the last minute equaliser? Al, yeah. you were quite scathing at half time. Um, oh, to put it your... mildly. <laughs> in your, what did you um... say, Al? What did you say, Al? <laughs> when it was 45s I've seen in all my years watching Barnsley Football Club, it was boring. Boring, boring, boring. Did you go last season, Al? Well, no, 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 as bad as that. Oh, that season we got relegated below Derby, we got minus 21 points. Mariska Ball. Yeah. Have you, have you missed those seasons? Um, yeah. Mariska Ball, I mean. You were, I wouldn't do that one then. Um, you <laughs> were, were very scathing at half time with your report. And to be fair, a, a lot of people agreed with that from what I'd seen as well. It was, wasn't it? We started 4 4 2. We know Potsy on the wing. Uh, and it didn't work for us, did it? It just didn't work. We 
we we didn't even threaten. Uh, and as Andy said, I don't think they did, but they look better side in that first half. Uh, but why do we go one goal down and start then, decide to play football? I just don't understand. And same thing again, what happened at Burton, they equalised and we played again and quick, quick, late goal, we got an equalise and we got a winner there. Why are we doing this? I just don't understand. It started 4-4-2. I think we then changed it to, I think, 3-4-1-2. Uh, and then he changed it again to a 4 5 1. We're not getting any cohesion inside. If he's changing patterns all the time, we're not going to have a. I don't know. It's. I don't know what we're doing. What the players know what they're doing. It, it's, it's unreal. And Slanina, wow, he's kicking. I might as well go on with him one leg. I could kick better with me one leg than what he can kick. He can't, Josh. He can't. <laughs> we got out of jail. And as I said on preview show, they'd win 2-1. And uh, honestly, truthfully, it was looking that way, wasn't it? It was really looking that way. You were gutted when, they, when Robert scored. I'd take a point. But at the end of the day, what we got, uh, I think I've seen that uh, it's one win in 20 at Oakwell. Whether I'm right or not, I don't know. And, and that were, that that's what it is. We're not making the fortress. And it was similar to college football last season. It was similar to what we had. We've not moved on. And our coach, Ari, keeps on about uh, saying he do not know his settled team. He do not know what he's got. Come on. You've got to get it sorted. You're the leader of the pack. And you've got to rectify this. It's up to you. You're the coach. You can't keep saying they're not playing. They're not good enough. And they've got to prove the point. Yeah, they go up pitch and it's their job and they're not performing. But you've got to make it right. And he's got to make it right for Saturday. Certainly has. Greg, as much as we're sort of saying that we weren't impressive in that first half, we, I think in his preview, we all sort of appreciated that Wick, this Wickham side is not the Wickham side of last season. And it's sort of a different type of Wickham side in which you play. They're very possession based now. It's not a case of sort of playing a little bit more old school in the way in which they have. They've still got the old player that can, that can put the cell about in that capacity. As much as we weren't great... It's not as though Wickham were entirely in control of that game and we were getting absolutely battered and it's a and it's a huge sort of onslaught on our goal and we're lucky to still be in it. It was just a boring game, I think, for both sides not really wanting to lose it is the way I saw it. Yeah, it was, it was a game of two poor teams. Two poor teams that I think both teams were want after we draw by the end of it. You know, we were lucky to rescue a draw. Um, I just having flashbacks to last season. We we're, we're not playing until we go one 0 down. Um, what annoyed me from the from the first minute was the fact is we're playing four four two and we're playing right backs as as right and left midfielder. We're playing a centre back at, at right back, and um, I was suggesting at left back. I was I don't know. Some people think he can't play there. Some people think he can. Um, it's square pegs in round holes. Um, play with the players you've got. We've got Keeler done that can play that could have played on the left. He didn't need to play up top. So Kieran Lofthouse, I didn't see him do anything throughout the whole game. That's not his fault. He's been played out of position because for some reason Clark thinks that anybody can play anywhere. And that, that's what it looks like. It looks like we've got absolutely no comprehension of what football is at, at some points because. The players that don't know where they're playing. I don't think. I mean, we've we, we were playing with two midfielders, and I, you could have told me that we didn't have a midfielder, and I'd have really agreed with you, because it looked completely vacant in centre of pitch. You know, um, we can't we can't keep hold of the ball. All we're doing is is lofting it up and hoping that Cosgo can fetch it down. On it time, we played well when Humphreys come on up top with Cosgrove, and then we had Jalo on left. That's because you've got a natural left footer on left hand side who was used to playing as a winger. So he was playing at left midfield as a winger. And you're playing a striker up top who was used to playing up top. You know, you play these players in the right positions, you can see that things start happening because you might not have the best tactics in the world, but the position's correct. I mean, you don't forget how to play as a winger if you've been a winger your whole career. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I'm completely with Al. This chopping, changing the systems mid-game, 
It's confusing the fans. It's confusing the players. The players look absolutely bemused, half of them. Um, the goals were... I mean, there were, there were countless errors in leads up to both. The uh, first one being Clotter just got moved out of the way like somebody were just moving a wardrobe <laughs> on wheels. They just moved him out of the way. You know, instead of him challenging for the header, and then De Givinier fails to stop him getting a crossing. The second one, um, it, it takes on, it, it, it runs direct, directly at Cotter and gets the ball past him, crosses the ball in, and then, like you say, it's complete cluster uh, happiness in, in the area. Um, but, yeah, again, I, I, th I think when we go 1-0 down and we start attacking, we look dangerous. I don't get why we can't just start out attacking. Why do we have to wait until we go 1-0 down to do that? If we're meant to be one of the best teams in this league, or top six, certainly, or a squad would dictate that. Um, why can't we just go out there and attack teams? Why do we have to always be the team that wants to defend first and then attack later? You know, go out there and, and take the game by the scruff of the neck and take, take it to the teams. You know, it's when we play away, we play some semi-decent football. When we're at home, we just seem to curl up into a ball and just wait until, you know, stuffing gets kicked out and, us, and then we finally wake up and decide, oh, we're playing football today, are we? You know, and yeah, Clark's really not, not ticking any boxes for me at the minute. I mean, changing systems, it's really annoying me, if I'm quite honest. Um, playing players out of position, not really kicking into gear till we go one nil down is probably all key key things I can take from the game. I think it was first half one of the most boring games I've ever seen in my life. Um and second half we were just reactive all, all over again and um yeah that's that's about it. That's all I can take from the game and it gives me no confidence at all going into a, an important fixture weekend. A quick one for you all though. Do you think it's like uh, captain with Connell being captain? Like it was when Alfie Mawson went captain. They took it off Alfie Mawson and, and moved it somewhere else. Do you think that's of an effect on Luca? Because he's not Luca what we expect him to be, is he? I wouldn't have said so. I think it's because most of the games, all the other sides have grown extra midfielder in there. Like you look at Wickham yesterday, they had an extra body in that midfield between yeah. Craig and Luca, and there's there's two versus three. There's only one winner in that necessarily. And when you've got fullbacks playing as the wingers on our side as well. It's just, it's difficult. I get what you're saying, Al, and when it happened with Alfie Mawson took it off and he looked a completely different player, especially when you've got someone like Mark Roberts who could potentially come and step in and, and take over. Could be something Clark thinks about. To, to be uh, fair, though, to be fair, though, looking at the stats on yesterday's matches, Luke had more touches than anybody else on the pitch yesterday. He had the better success, pass success rate than anybody on our team. He, he's, he's playing fine, but he gets overwhelmed. And it's quite evident to see that it's that 3v2 in midfield all the time. It's like Clark's just completely opposed to having a midfield whatsoever. I, think, know? That, I think them stats though can be a little bit misleading because we just, we use, Lucas should realistically in every game have our most touches because he's got the best passing range. So he's going to, by osmosis, take it off centre half and turn and play and move forward. And some of them passes that he plays are five yards to Matt Roberts to just work in that triangle to work out sides and things. So I think them stats are slightly misleading because he just is like the quarterback of our team. I think another thing that actually hinders us as well is we've got Josh Earl and De Givinez as, as fullbacks. They're really defensive, really defensive. If you look at any other team in this league, they've got fullbacks backing up the wingers. Ours don't, they stay back. They're so not, I think that's they're not fullbacks, though, are they? Like, the Givenay is not a fullback; he's a centre half. Well, well, that's that's what I'm saying. It's like <laughs> that's what I mean. It's it's yeah. it's skew whiff at best. I mean, it's they're too defensive, so they don't help Cotter and Loft out out playing yesterday. Also, we've got no midfield, so there's no outlet in the middle of the park. So it is just being able to fill up and out. Cosgrove can come up with something. And I'm sorry, but he's not pulling up any trees this season either. The only plus so, point out at the last few games, though, is Humphreys. Yeah, he has to start. Come on, two goals in three. So there is a plus if we can get him fit. The only problem, the only problem with uh, 
with Humphreys. He, he, he looked good when he came on and he, play, he played up front with Cosgrove and then all of a sudden he's back playing on the left wing, but, you know, left of a of a front three, if you like, with Jallo on the right-hand side, him on the left. That's because he's again, changed formation again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then again, Cosgrove's up on it. So you play a ball to Cosgrove, the only way he can deal with anything is to try and control it and then try and lay it off. Because he can't edit anywhere. There's nobody anywhere near him. I don't like this playing one up front business. So I, I think that. just don't, I think it gives a nice segue to at least the positive from that game that we can take is the changes which Clark made and plays he brought on made an impact on the game. I think of I can't remember of the three I can't remember if there's another sub as well that came on, but obviously Benson contributed Benson, to the yeah. final oh, goal. Yeah, Benson played um, well as well. And then Jallo and Humphreys combined for the first one. Benson contributed. I can't remember if anyone else came on off the top of my head, but of them three, all three of them came on and got us back into the game between each other. So, and as much as it is one of them games of yeah. like chop and change with X, Y, Z and did loads of different things, the players which they did bring on all, for me, stakes a claim to this weekend. Let's have a Would think. it be because they were playing in the natural positions where they come on? You know? Nah. Beggar's belief, that, <laughs> mate, you know? Especially if he didn't fetch goalkeeper on and put him up front. <laughs> He's got a right foot. He can score. So David James came on and did that. <laughs> Somebody needs to tell Gaga that if we're losing, get the flipping ball forward. Don't hang on to it and flop about and just stand there with it at his feet, waiting for somebody to come to him. That's what you do if you're losing. Uh, if you're winning, not losing. And other thing, get ready, get ready for, get ready for the next match. I'm just going to wonder. It'll be somewhere between sixty and sixty-five minutes. <laughs> then Gaga goes down. Injured and asked somebody to come on and no, I'm all right. Mark, because then we'll not take him off because he's a goalkeeper. Three so times Clark can three change games, formation again. A tactical, surely it's wrong, isn't it? Three it's times. Wrong. Three if that's the case. It's I mean, wrong. I'm, I'm going to give him benefit of doubt unless he does it on Saturday. No, he's done it every match this season I'm, so I'm far. It's not. It's not just one occasion that's happened. He's done it in every single game to change his formation. I'm just I, we should stop him just so he can stop changing formation. <laughs> If he does it on Saturday, I'll call I'll call it out. But you know, give him benefit of doubt, you know, don't be so harsh. Be so harsh, you're too. Just... Well, watching out to you know we are lost, don't I you? Martin at Burton went like that to him. You know we didn't lose, they're don't... They're calling it from sidelines. What's yeah, wrong so with it? it. I'm what's not wrong saying with wrong, it? wrong. No, no I'm asking no I'm asking Andy because Andy says he's gonna call out. Just, uh, my question is what's what's wrong with him doing it? I'm gonna call out that he's doing it. Not injured. I don't like feigning injury. I don't like it when people, like we had the, the previous match, where a player goes down at penalty area, like there's a sniper, and he's, you know, he's tripped or he said he's not, he's just gone down like a st stockport player, just gone down, made an idiot to his son, trying to con. I don't like conning. I don't, you know, I don't mind a bit of housery, you know, taking a throw in front one place, you know, picking a ball to take a throw in and thinking, no, I'll waste a few more seconds by dropping it and let somebody else take it. I can, I'll live with a bit of that. But I, I don't like this pretending nonsense. I I, it's cheating. Cheating, Al. Don't like I it. I would say the other ones are worse than Gaga going down. Yeah, because it's, it's almost the one of when you're doing that for like a throw or something like that, only one side's benefiting from it. Whereas when Gaga goes down, both sides can sort of reset. Like Wrong. the other team can also go over and speak to their manager. We can speak to our players, go over and speak, uh, and speak to Clark. So I think it's, it's a more fair way of Cheating, is that looking at it? Cheating. I'm not saying <laughs> it's them two below us. I'm not saying it's cheating. I'm saying he seems to get injured a lot around sixty to sixty-five minutes. Seems to have to go down and get so. Maybe if he's doing, a I'm, lot I'm of not too naive to think that that's not happening. Well, we'll, we'll see. is bad as, as a goalkeeper, to be fair. Oh do... yeah, because all that running about they do. Yeah, yeah honestly, I, I, think, I think lads why they do it to change his boots over so he can kick better. No, well, I've not seen him kick good yet, so <laughs> they need to get some more boots. There's a few more pairs you need to try out then. <laughs> That's it. Has he tried any Puma Kings yet? I said we've got a big target forward up there, but now he's kicking it up to Cotter. I've got to show <laughs> you back to Sesame. I've got to show you Mark when I play balls, finger and thumb peg. So, you know, which way to send it? If the wind's blowing, where to send it? But what about last night's crowd? Right, I'm lost now. I'm lost. Horrible. And set so, but. There were, I reckon there were only seven, seven to seven and a half thousand there. There were Are never you thousand there last night. That's because game one on Sky and nobody wants to go on a wet Tuesday night watching boring football. That's a combination of two. 
It's, do you think it's a bit alarming, Andy, when you see sort of these attendances and we're only in October? Like, it's not like it's turned and the weather's terrible and it's December and it's minus two and you'd be sat in cold. It's like, the weather weren't great yesterday, but it's not a, a good sign this early in the season as well for me. I don't think it's a good sign for uh, for proper football. I mean, I don't suppose it will make that much difference financially if it's on Sky. Well, they've got got compensation, got the got the money that you know makes it up. But you know, football's at its best when it's live. And when I mean live, I don't mean live on telly. I mean live in in four D. You know, surround sound. Sat there watching it with all the stuff around you, including chucking it down with rain last night. Um, I felt for you, Smithy. I, I could see you there. I felt for you from where. From my lofty perch, I could. I felt for you. Over twenty quid a ticket, no, that that's not on on a Tuesday night. You know, people aren't going to pay when they can watch it on Sky. You know, it's not forty. I mean, I mean, if they put it down to like ten or fifteen quid, I can see a few more people turning up. But no, yeah, they just need to stop stop putting them on Sky. That'd be the thing. Let get football. That, that's not going to stop because it, well, it generates football, too much money. Yeah, but football, exactly that. But you know what? what where, where does it end? Does it end with? The co the COVID year where you don't play at all in front of anybody because you get enough money from Sky that you don't actually need to have crowds. So you know it's all get it all gets a little bit it all gets a little bit silly. I think. Well, I, th I think that I think that's what most clubs think now that fans aren't needed because you can pump sound in. So I'll get peaky well, blinders well, round well, to it. Well, just in Oakwell last night, except for rustling and murmurs. There were no there were no atmosphere in that first half. Oh no, no, it's, it's in in East. Eastern, I don't know who it was, but I, I saw it because it, it were about five, six, seven rows in front of us just to wrap two of them. I have never, it, it, everything everything that you like about proper, watching proper football, that he were up, shouting and roaring, every mistake he were up and didn't catch a word of what he was shouting, not one word, but it weren't positive. <laughs> that much I do know. It and it's not like I'm trying to sanitise it for this show. I really, it was that loud and that that forceful. Couldn't actually get the words out. But then they scored and that were it. Up and shouting and roaring and do it going absolutely do lally. And then we equalise and it's, come on you, Ray! and all that. And then it's shouting and roaring when we go a goal behind. And it's, come on, when we've equalised. And it's within 10 minutes, Every emotion in football, one guy, I take if I got an hat on, I'd take my hat off to him. I bet he was fuming with that second goal. Can we just say it, that that was a penalty for De Givinier as well? Yeah, it was a penalty. Because that was a penalty, yeah, wasn't it? Was a penalty. That's still penalty. The referees okay. this don't, season. Don't been... start me off. We, 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 we can't we can't go on that. that didn't make it <laughs> I like pushing that Andy button, that Andy Don't wrestling. start me off with that. I'm oh, like... pink in face instead of red. I'm gonna add balance to it. I weren't sure, and I watched it, and the, on the replay, this showed multiple angles, and none of them were definitive for me to think he did get clipped. He did get I clipped. I weren't, I weren't sure. Al. He did get I clipped. Sure. Get my I, th I, th I think he did. I didn't think he dove. I, th I think he did get clipped. You get robbed by down. referee. Is that what you want to hear, Greg? <laughs> what you want me to say? We were robbed. That's it. That's that's title video that's sorted. Title. We were on <laughs> <laughs> title video sorted. Yeah, I think it was just a bit of a. It feels like we're just in a bit of a rut at the minute overall. But not knocking Wickham, they've scored two in every game, aren't they? This season so far. I think all bar all bar one. In 2024, in all competitions, Wickham scored 68 goals in 2024. So, you know, that they can score goals, but we get them too. Saying it, well, I was looking, I've just been looking at season stats so far and we XG and everything and, and the goal oh, squad and, and stuff. No, we no, in, in, in attacking sense, we're, we're, we're up where we should be, but we just can't keep anything out of net in his, in his own <laughs> the defenses. His defensive stats are way down, down like 16th, 17th in the league. It's, it's, Bizarre. Exactly the same as last season. I'm sure we yeah. had a top a, a top three attack with a 14th place defence. Is our wind at season? Might have been 15th by the end of it. Um, yeah, get your thoughts on last night's game down in the comments below. 
Um, do you think Daryl Clark can turn it around, especially this weekend as well, against Huddersfield Town as we make our way to the John Smith Stadium? So looking at the stats pack, manager Michael Duff, Ooh. Um, top scorer just for Cromer with four this season, sat 15th in the league, form terrible at the minute, actually four losses in a row and a one win way back when. Key player, Josh Cromer, uh, so obviously doing very, very well. Formation, Duff sort of stayed with what he used with us as well. 3-5-2, 5-3-2, whichever way you look at it. And the key stat is that we've already mentioned the show once, but it is the pink away day shirt. Um, so as Andy's probably got his background pink all over, Al's wearing his favourite strip from this season. Um, that he's got, he's probably bought all three by now. Um, Saturday is wearing pink day for breast cancer. Um, so I'm not sure if there's anything going on directly at the game, um, but there's a just, just Given page on social media, um, which I think have been set up. And also we are raffling off the signed pink shirt. So if you want details on that, get in the comments below and Tom will be in contact with you. It'll be Tom on his account or he'll be using the Red Oliver account um, and he will message you the details from there of how you can enter and get yourself involved with a chance of winning this lovely pink shirt that is signed by all the players. So, Andy, how do you feel about this one? Because start of the season, I just feel come down, got Michael Duff in. On paper, looks like a strong side to come back. Set off well, got 12 points, sat 15th and four losses in a row. They started off like a train, didn't they? And everybody was saying, you know, they've come down, they're a strong side, they've signed some decent players or good players. Well, very good players mm -hmm. in some cases. And um, they're going to go straight back up. You know, the question is, it, who, who's going to be top two? Is it going to be with, with Birmingham? Is it going to be them? Is it going to be Bolton? Is it <laughs> going to be Rotherham? Who's it going to be and all, and all that? Um, just Rex to say on the background, pink all over, uh, beat one of, our, one of our friends on Twitter, BFC... Connell, sir. Try to say, try to connoisseur, but it's Connell, it's sir. Connell, sir. Clever, clever. He, he, he did a thing. He put, he put some on to do bounds and I asked him and he, he did it. So, so thank you for that, B, BFCC. I'll call him that. Can't keep saying that. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, yeah, I think I, if, if you'd have asked me a few weeks ago, I'd have feared the worst because I thought, you know, they, <laughs> they were winning for fun 4 0 at Bolton. And you think, wow, anybody that's going to win 4 0 at Bolton. Uh, aren't going to be half bad, and it's gone off the rails from then. From then, it's gone off the rails, and they keep they keep losing. Um, I'm going to be doing the show in a bit with uh, a, 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 a long supporting member of Uddersfield clan, and uh, he'll be telling us that they're not playing that well either. Um, Michael Hellick, as I understand it, is uh, injured, so he's unlikely to play. If that's if oh no, that's a shame. So. so that makes it a little bit, you know, makes it a little bit, from our point of view, not for him, a little bit better from our point of view. Uh, unlike your booing people, I, I liked um, Michael Duff. I think, uh, you know, the here for the long old comments. And it was his longevity that really got you, wasn't it? And, and beggaring off. Well, it, it did because he weren't the only one. You know, he were, he, he was, he were one in, in a line of them. He weren't the, you know, and it, it, it it hit people harder, I think. It certainly hit me harder because uh, you know we've got Big Val and he was going to, and he went after ten months. And when when Michael came, we thought you know we worry was saying we thought thank God we're going to be able to build rather than this constant moving around and changing and what have you. Um, and most people bought into it. We didn't quite make it, you know, of the line at the end. Um, and then he begged it off, so it sort of hit harder because of what he'd said. But it don't mean he's not a decent human being. It don't mean that he's not a good coach, because I think he is. Um, he's got some just, decent players. Just underachieved with the side he has with us. I thought that's all. Uh, well, I just well, yeah. All right. I hope he underachieves on Saturday and probably on Tuesday. I hope he didn't write right well with Swans either, did he? <laughs> he didn't, and you know sometimes but he's I mean, a good he coach. He did all right at Cheltenham. He did all right with us, Jeb. I mean, I, I will be. I will always be grateful for him, irrespective of how he tended. As how it started, we were, if you cast your mind back, we were utterly on our knees. We'd been relegated, we'd got players that we were relegated with that thought they were better than they were, and he pulled the club up by its bootstraps. 
Me and Alan spoke to him and he said, I get everybody, there's no Bertie Biggins here, I get everybody to say hello to everybody. Whoever they are, say hello to them and acknowledge people because you're all part of the same, you're all part of the same club pulling together. And he did that. So, you know, he deserves a lot of... Well, credit. some stuff he says he's going to do, some says his stuff he says, he do, he says he's going to do, he doesn't do. Like, you're stay for hard, longer than five minutes. Man, you, you're a hard man, you, Craig. No, I, no, I just... Man. When somebody gives me the word that they're going to do something and they don't do it, I don't tend to trust them again. I don't know, that's just me. Yeah, it's just you. So, you know, I've... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm only I'm only joshing Craig. Josh. See, I'm getting them all in now. <laughs> Al, I'm joshing Craig. That's all I'm doing. Um, yeah. So we'll see. You know, they've got uh, they've got Herbie can't be bothered. Kane. I don't know how often uh, he's going to be playing because he's not played that much. So you know, you watch him play on Saturday. And he'll be he'll be best midfield player in world on Saturday if he you know if he plays. They've got they've got Anthony. What's it? What's his Anthony name? Evans. Evans, isn't it? He's a player. He's a player that you can rate and what have you. Um, so you know they've got some. They've got some skill all over the pitch. So they've also, you know, they're also good at going down for penalties in, in <laughs> at their at their ground against us and creating mayhem for me and upsets and all that. So I think it'll be a good game. I don't think. I don't think at the minute we might be able to help them to turn the season back round. The way uh, we're doing, we're going to give him a chance, aren't we? Nice if, of us. <laughs> if we keep keep doing what we're doing, um, I just think that we need to decide what formation we're going to play for a bit and stick to it. Pick players, as Craig said, pick some players in the positions that they're used to and that they know how to do rather than and instead of moving them about throughout the game. Unless things are patently not working, cha then change it around, but not keep changing it around because... Craig said, you don't know what you're doing. If you're, if you're supposed to be in a particular position and then you get moved somewhere else, and then you get moved somewhere else, and you're looking around thinking, oh, where, where is the man supposed to be? And then it becomes Keystone Cops at the back because people are moving about. A back four, all centre-halves, two, two wingers, both full-backs because we don't trust them to be full-backs. It's just, it's just a bit of a mess, I think, a bit all over the place. Um, hopefully, Michael will be in the same position over at Huddersfield trying to get the best out of his team because, like you've said, they've won the one game out of what the last six or something like that. They'd won two before, right? The last six have just won the one at Bolton and, and lost lost the rest. So hopefully they're scrabbing about a bit, trying to uh, get players playing in the right position and playing proper football. We've just got to stop them. Don't let them, don't let them settle. Don't let them do it. Oh, when you sort of look at the sides that they have beat so far this season, 2-0, 1-0 opening a day against Peterborough, then 2-1 against Stevenage, 1-0 against Shrewsbury, um, and then the 4-0 at Bolton, which at the time looked great, but seeing where Bolton are now, and especially one of their goals where they really messed about right at the back and it just deflected in off an Huddersfield player. They've not, barring maybe Peterborough, They've not beaten many sides that you'd think would be up there. I mean, obviously, we struggled against Steve, Stevenage. But the wins which they've got are against sides you'd almost expect them to beat. It is. The last two home games, uh, Northampton, who we were 2-0 uh, at Oakwell against them, going back to two apiece, they beat Huddersfield 3-1. Mm -hmm. uh, then the uh, following game on Tuesday, it was Blackpool at home, and Blackpool beat them 2-0. So they're there for teching only if... We sort of line up a shape and his confidence. And that's what it's all about. It's about his confidence. It's about his continuity. It's about his passing. It's putting two or three passes together or four or five passes and not just losing ball and allowing Huddersfield to come at us. We've Everything got, then, Al. Got Everything. To, got to be just more bits. resilient. That's the word I'm looking for. And we've not been resilient in his play. So, uh, as I say, just hope... He knows, uh, as as what he says, he keeps uh, this talented team. Uh, what Gaffer said, uh, Daryl Clark said, uh, and he expects more. But we're not seeing that on a week to week basis, are we? So uh, in first Yorkshire derby, let's see if we can put the wrongs to right. Yep, it'd be very nice to looking at last night's game from Craig. It seems like an absolute onslaught, really, from Birmingham. 20 shots from Birmingham, five on target, 70% possession, nearly three times more passes 
than Huddersfield with an 83% pass accuracy. Total control from Birmingham. So not really a game that Huddersfield were necessarily in. And obviously on the back of that, the previous three, which they have lost against um, obviously Birmingham and then Reading, Northampton, Blackpool. They are on a bit of a real slide at the minute. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think many teams are going to go up against Birmingham this season and come out with any joy whatsoever. Their team is outrageous. Even for a championship, you're looking top ten easy with that with that team. Um, yeah, others feel they're a bit doldrums at the minute, but I don't think. I think it's only a matter of time before they start scoring again. Um, the the issue is because they're not scoring. Um, they've got a winger up top uh, in Caroma, and they've got a young lad next to him, Callum Marshall. Freddie Ladapo's come into the into the team, so he's just bedding in because he, arra- he arrived late. They've got Reese Healy. I don't know why he's not playing. Um, they've got Danny Ward as well. I don't know why he's not playing. I don't know if it's injuries or or whatever. But um, yeah, look at looking at the statistics of the of the team and the league as a whole. As I was earlier. They have the highest XG of any team in the league, including Birmingham. Um, so the cl- they're clearly creating the chances; they're just not putting the ball in the net. Um, and the way we've been playing, uh, we we could be the the team that turns the tide for them if we don't perform well. Because, like I say, if if we're going to continue the way we're we're currently going, we're we're being chop and changed and, and everything. It's um, Duff seems to be sticking with the three five two that they've been playing with all season. So they they'll know all the roles. They've got a good team. I mean, Lassa Sorensen one of the best right wing backs in the league last season. The Elec we know all about. Tom Lee's as well. I mean, he's an established player at this and above leagues level. Josh Caromas. I mean, they've got some really good players in there with some youth sprinkled about. So, uh, yeah, like I say, everybody will be like, oh, look at look at, look at the way, the, the look at the results they've had. But I don't think that's the full picture. I think they, I think they are going to start scoring soon, and I hope it's after we beat them on Saturday. <laughs> um, so, 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 yeah, it's, yeah, it's going to be a, t- it's going to be a tough, tough day. Um, I suppose for playing away, but playing away seems to be our niche. That we enjoy doing because we certainly don't like enjoy playing at home. Got to enjoy playing some uh, somewhere, I suppose. If you have to, might as well be just twenty mile away. That'll be all right. Predictions, Andy. What are you reckoning to this one? I reckon this is where it turns itself around for for uh, Huddersfield. I think we just don't know what we're doing half the time. We we'll keep moving about, so nobody's content. So it's going to be two one to Huddersfield. Oh. Well, you're gonna say all that and say two one win. Yeah. I'll go on then. I'll I'll be positive. I think they'll be looking to make amends for poor performances, and I think they'll take game to Huddersfield. So I'm going for an Andy special two one to town. I'm sure you've said that for the past three weeks. Since we lost seven 0 to Man United, you've said, "Yeah, we'll turn it around this week. We'll make amends." And so yeah. far, no. Crazy. The eternal optimist, Josh. The eternal optimist. <laughs> exactly. In a dyke. Not lost though, Al. Not lost. <laughs> I think it's going to be similar to Wickham. I think it's going to be two two bad teams playing against each other, um, both setting up not to lose, <laughs> and eventually it'll be a two-two. Oh, nice. Um, well, I'm going to go. Well, yeah, I'm going to go one nil to us. Do a clean sheet. Surely, if, we need we, we need one eventually, and, and we've got loads of centre backs. So we're just sticking up a three on and all to keep that clean sheet because playing with four didn't work. So let's try five centre halves and two wing backs next uh, on Saturday. See where that gets us. Um, we might get a clean. Play Lofthouse up front again, eh? Yeah, Lofthouse, <laughs> Cosgrove, Luke in middle, and then seven centre halves. Well, be, hopefully, hopefully then, Josh, it'll be a pretty in pink sort of afternoon. Exactly. Go for a Jose Mourinho esque 1 0. Right, we'll be back on Sunday with our reaction to the Huddersfield game um, and previewing the Huddersfield game at the same time. That's confusing. <laughs> As we play them in the 
Bristol Street be, Bradley Trophy. It's going to be tricky. Sunday morning, 8 o'clock Sunday morning, <laughs> we're previewing and reviewing the Huddersfield game. It's going to be... Have a lie down. We're good if we go now. through exact same things as well. Just, <laughs> just, just, copy, just copy this on the end just... of the next video. Copy, copy, copy and paste. We can copy and paste that one, can't we? I'll do that. I'll pull this forward. I'll, I'll, I'll update the stats pack and then we'll just go from there. That's it. Right. We'll be back on Sunday morning. We'll see you there. You Reds.